Welcome. My name is Vicki Cody. I am with High Tech Kids. Um, like I said, this is how to start a robotics team in Minnesota. So let's just dive right in. Okay, so today we're going to go, we're going to do a quick overview of each robotics program that High Tech Kids offers. Um, we're going to start with FLL Explorer, then FLL Challenge, and then we're going to go on to First Tech Challenge. In each of those sections, we're going to talk about support available to coaches from High Tech Kids. We're going to have a section about grants and scholarships, and then we're going to have uh, breakout rooms that you can choose which one you go into, um, and we'll be answering you know, more of a deep dive program questions will be answered in those breakouts. So I want to just start quickly with um, who High Tech Kids is, who FIRST is, how we work together. Um, High Tech Kids and FIRST are two separate entities, but we are in partnership. Um, so FIRST is a national nonprofit. We are the nonprofit in Minnesota. FIRST has four robotics programs, and you can see them here on the screen starting you know, with the youngest kids in First Lego League Explore, First Lego League Challenge, then First Tech Challenge. Those are the three programs that High Tech Kids runs in the state of Minnesota. First also offers First Robotics programs, and that program is actually run by the New Hampshire nonprofit First, even in the state of Minnesota. All right, so like I said before, First is a New Hampshire nonprofit that authors those um, programs, FRC, First Robotics Competition, First Tech Challenge, and all of the First Lego League programs, which is Challenge, Explore, and Discover. Um, First does the national nonprofit. They come up with a game each year. Each one of these programs has a different game each year. Um, they they host a world championship. Uh, they, they host all of the um, main rules and, um, and all that development uh, regarding that on their website. They first partners with people all over the country, actually all over the world. They're, all of their programs are global. Um, we are that nonprofit in Minnesota that they partner with. And we, we bring you First Tech Challenge, First Lego League Challenge, and First Lego League Explore in Minnesota. So once you register nationally with First, then everything is done here locally. We manage the events, we manage the training, um, for coaches, and we have some some team training too, um, and a, along with volunteer training. And so, once you get down to the the local Minnesota level, um, you'll be spending a lot of time on our website or chatting with us. Jeannie Badger works with the First Lego League programs, both Challenge and Explore, and Chris Simonson works with the First Tech Challenge teams. All right, so now I'm going to hand it over to Jeannie Badger. She is going to talk about um, First Lego League Explore. Jeannie, we can't hear you. Sorry, need to unmute. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. um, so we will take questions. We will have separate breakout rooms, both First Lego League Explore and First Lego League Challenge. I will be in that breakout room to answer questions specific to this program. So the program itself is basically grades one to four, we really find the sweet spot is second grade and third grade, oftentimes by fourth grade, they're ready for first Lego League challenge. Um, first grade sometimes is a little bit tricky for the, the students at that age. So the kids work as a team. The teams are generally two to six. Again, the sweet spot seems to be about four or five kids for that. Um, they explore a real world problem. They'll create and build uh, a, a Lego model and they build a team poster to share their journey that they worked on. And then they participate in a non-competitive festival. So it's more um, kind of think science fair showing their work. And then they work on the core values, which we will talk about. And the first thing we'll do is actually show you a video of what it looks like at a festival.
awesome. I love I love exploring. Those kids are so fun. Um, so here's our basic season. So we start, registration has already actually opened with FIRST. Um, the nice thing about the Explore program is it's really an eight to tweet, uh, 12-week program. So you can kind of start it on your schedule. Early August is when they announce specifically what the challenge is. We know that the basic theme this year is about oceans, but we don't know what the question the kids are exploring and um, learning about will be. And then we have Explore Festivals. We have them scheduled kind of throughout um, the year. So we start with our first one is in November. So if you're able to start your program early in the season, you certainly can. But if you're not, really ready to start your teams until maybe January, even February, we do events all the way into April. And they're generally one a month. We don't do one in the month of January. That's when we do our state tournament. And then teams have, uh, there's kind of a lottery um, for those that are interested in going on to the world's experience, but mainly a Minnesota Explore Festival is a, a great culmination of your season. Um, here are the basic costs. National registration is $125 plus shipping. And with that, that includes the Explore set, which is based on the theme. And again, this year's theme is, um, oh my gosh, I just thought, forgot the word. Um, submerged. Oceans. Submerged. Sorry. Yep, Thank you about that. Yep. Um, so it's about ocean. So they get a, submer a submerged set and that um, kind of features a, um, a submarine that the kids will build and then then it has two team meeting guides and then six engineering notebooks. The team meeting guides are for, and actually the next slide shows kind of what they look like. Um, they go hand in hand. So the team meeting guide goes one week at a time. And then the engineering notebook is what the kids can all fill out. And they can work with one or two. And it's kind of set on there that you can follow along. Vicki, can you show me the next slide, please? Oh, I jumped ahead of myself. Sorry about that. Um, so, yeah, I was just trying to show the team meeting guides. Um, so the team meeting guide and the engineering notebook, they go hand in hand. So what's in the team meeting guide is what the coach uses to follow along. Um, and then the team meeting, the engineer notebook is what the kids, they can enter their stuff in there. They can share one as a team or they can each have their own engineering notebook. And then here are the costs. And then the Minnesota Festival is 120 and that's about a two and a half um, our event that the kids come, they will set up their table, as you saw, they'll meet with reviewers. And this is, um, again, non-competitive. So there's no one's winning. Every team, um, every child receives a medal and every team re receives an award certificate. So to get started, basically you need two coaches um, or mentors, you do not have to have a technology background. The kids are programming, but in those engineering notebooks, it walks them through tutorials within the Spike Prime Essential software. So you are seeing exactly what the kids need to be doing. You, The coach does not need to know everything about it. The teams typically meet one to two times a week for about an hour, hour and a half. And then you can figure out your schedule if you want to be a six-week season or a 12-week season. Um, the kids, again, they're two to six kids. Six is a lot. <laughs> Sometimes you can have more if you need to. We just ask if you do that, you let us know so that we make sure we have enough medals for all the kids. Um, the kids work together as a team. They explore the theme, which is submerged, which is, again, the ocean, building that team model, and then creating their fun team poster. And then, so that is for the younger kids. And again, we will go into breakouts and answer specific questions about this. Now I'll talk about first Lego League Challenge, which is for kids a little bit older, their fourth grade to about eighth grade. Again, they're working, building a program, um, building a robot and programming that um, with the Lego Spike Prime software, or they can actually use any software, but most teams use that built-in Spike Prime software. They also have a research presentation that they work on with the theme of the season. And again, this year's theme is submerged. All the first Lego League has the same theme, but the question or problem that they're researching is a little more advanced for the challenge kids. Um, so let's see what happens at a qualifier. <laughs>
All right. Um, so the first Lego League Challenge season, it is on a timeline. Registration, like we said, is already open. Um, most of the teams actually will register in August, September, um, even into October. We do coach training for our coaches, so you're not in this all on your own. Um, we open our Minnesota event registration in early October. Teams do have to be registered nationally with FIRST, as Vicki talked about, um, to participate in a Minnesota event. Then September through February, you are working on the robots. They're working on their project. And then we have regional qualifying events, November through December. Um, and then we also offer non-advancing events. So maybe for those teams who are brand new or don't really want to be in that uber competitive competition trying to get to the state tournament, the non-advancing tournament is kind of a lower pressure event. And also teams, maybe if they didn't advance to the state tournament out of their regional, they can participate in a non-advancing as a second event, kind of a second play to see how things are going. And then in February, we have our Minnesota State Championship. Uh, here are the basic costs of getting started. So that national registration is $250. That includes your team meeting guide, your two engineering notebooks, and a robot game rule book. You also have access to uh, digital copies of all of those materials as well. Um, you saw the, the mat that the kids were running the robot in. That's called the yearly challenge set. That's an additional $95. They've broken that apart um, as some teams might, some schools might have more than one team, but then they decide we really are going to share that challenge kit, that mat with the robot pieces on there. Um, and then teams can order a robot, uh, the robot equipment. That's a Lego Spike Prime is the one that the teams are using now. This is the price, the 540. That is actually a Spike Prime and an accessory kit, uh, expansion set, they call it. You don't need both the robot kit and the expansion set um, through the first dashboard only. The combination is um, is allowed to purchase there, but if you want to, you can go through Lego Education and buy just that Spike Prime Essential or Spike Prime kit if you um, want. If you have questions about that, feel free to let us know. And then there are options for that robot table. <clears throat> to You can buy a pre-built one or you can build one yourself, or you can just set the mat on the floor and have the kids practice that way. Um, if you're doing that, I recommend you kind of put boards on there. And then our Minnesota Regional competition fee is $195 for one event. And then getting started, again, um, we want those two coaches and adult mentors. They've gone through and done the youth protection screening through FIRST system. Really, it's kind of herding cats. You don't need to know, have a technology background. The information in those engineering notebooks, there's great tutorials in the software that help you um, help the kids along with that. Um, teams typically are meeting one to two times per week. Um, I'll be honest, that does amp up a little bit as you get closer to competition time. That's just what happens. But about one and a half, two hours um, per meeting is plenty to get through everything, get everything done, or get most of everything done. Um, you're going to have two to 10 kids. Those kids, are, again, are fourth to eighth grade. 10 kids is a lot. That sweet spot is really about six kids on your team. And the kids are working together. They're, again, they're researching the season theme. This year is based on the oceans. They do create an innovative project, which is a presentation they do, a five-minute presentation that you saw in the video. Um, they also share their robot that they've designed. They'll share that in judging, and then they compete in that Minnesota regional tournament. And then you're not in this alone. Um, High Tech Kids is here to help you and support you. Uh, most of the members of our staff have actually coached in the past, so we kind of know what you're going through. Um, so we are just a phone call or an email away, but we do a formalized training, the free training for coaches. Um, we've got some online ones and some in-person ones. And then we do have a fee-based rookie and second year coach training. We also do Spike Prime programming training for the coaches that so that that robot isn't quite so scary when it's put down in front of you. Uh, we offer research workshops. Those are generally done over MEA weekend just to kind of help you get things maybe focused or started on your research project. 
We do event calls the um, week before our events. We also do coach support calls. And so those are online. You call in, we kind of have a theme, but it may be the, oh, what are we doing and how does this work? And addressing some of those robot game questions, those seem to be the big ones. And then we have a Minnesota FLL Facebook group. And that is a great way for coaches to kind of connect with one another, maybe ask some questions, or maybe you're looking for um, more Lego pieces or a FLL table, things like that to share and get our Minnesota teams connected. And now I'm going to turn it over to Chris Simonson, and she will talk about First Check Challenge. That is for the older kids. Hi, thanks everybody for coming out tonight. Uh, and thanks for those of you that filled out the poll. Uh, so we've got a lot of FLL uh, challenge uh, people here and some FTC and a little bit of explore. So a little bit of everybody. So thanks for coming. So with the first tech challenge uh, that can start in grade six, uh, First listed as 7th through 12th grade, but we do allow 6th graders. Uh, it can be a little bit of a challenge just because it's more technical. So you just need to make sure those 6th graders are ready for the focus. With First Tech Challenge, we don't do the project like they do, the research project like we do in First Lego League Challenge. But now outreach becomes a more important part of it. So you still have the robot game. They're building an 18 by 18 by 18 inch robot. And we'll talk a little bit about it's a different kit. They're moving away from the Legos, which a lot of kids, especially starting in seventh grade, are really to, ready to move away from Legos. I feel like they're little kid stuff. Uh, and the focus count becomes a lot on their engineering portfolio. So they're really tracking their season in terms of how they designed the robot. They're learning skills with uh, with um, uh, maybe they're learning CAD skills or 3D printing skills. Uh, maybe they're reaching out to different companies to come in and talk to them about tech technology and how they can utilize some of those types of industry things into their robot. Uh, and again, those core values run through. So first has a set of six core values that run through all the programs that focus on teamwork and inclusion and uh, impact that they have on the greater world and, and three others. Uh, fun is one of them too. So, uh, and then they prepare for a competition and with our competition, in this case, they're actually forming alliances uh, for each match. So they're paired up randomly with another team and compete against two teams uh, in their robot game match. They also are going to have judging for talking about their season, but it's a single judging session, unlike with the first Lego League challenge where they have two judging sessions. This is everything incorporated into one. So one of the things with First Tech Challenge, if you're trying to sell this either to, you know, administration at a school or an organization you're working with, or even if you're a parent who's interested in getting it going, is the First Tech Challenge really has a wide variety of team roles that can prepare kids for careers uh, and for different internships and things as well. So everything from kind of being that manager, CFO of the team, uh, all the way down to the business and marketing. So a lot of teams are coming up with a business strategy. How are they going to get donations to cover uh, the costs of the program? Because costs do go up when you get to this program. Uh, the kids that are focused on the programming or the building or the design work, all of those uh, focus in on uh, different career areas. And this slideshow will be posted on our website. You are always welcome to grab like this graphic is one of first graphics. And so if you're trying to do a sales job to a school or something and you need a little bit of um, additional ammunition, uh, we can help you out with that. This is one of the graphics you can grab and we can um, help you out with some other things as well. So our season, same thing as with the other ones, registration has opened up. Uh, teams, a lot of teams won't register till sometime in the summer, uh, but you are welcome to register now. Uh, it is nice to be registered uh, and signed up with us for our mailings before our kickoff in early September. So the Saturday after Labor Day weekend, we have a big event 
And that event is a great place for a rookie team to come and kind of see other teams. You get the reveal for the game and get to see the game up close. There also will be breakout sessions that veteran teams will run that might teach about programming or about engineering portfolio or about how to do outreach. So it's a great place to bring your team uh, to just get that season started with a bang and to get connections going. Our event registration starts in late September uh, and early October, depending on which type of play you're going to do. And we'll talk a little bit about that a little bit later. But then again, you've got that fall uh, and early winter to be doing your designing, your building, your iterating. Uh, we run qualifier and league events from early November for the leagues, uh, mid-November for our qualifiers all the way through January. And uh, teams for FTC, if you're doing the qualifier route, you can sign up for one or two tournaments. And if you're doing a league, which is structured a little differently, you actually will have a, a meet zero and then three official meets. Those official meets are mostly focused on the robot game not so much the judging at that point until kind of your final one. And then you participate in a qualifier uh, tournament in January uh, if you do leagues. So leagues are structured just a little differently in that it gives kids, you start competing sooner and you do more small competitions before your bigger competition. So it's a chance for them to uh, do a lot of iterations in a quick fashion. So about every two weeks, they've got a little competition. Our state championship is in February, just like with the first Lego League Challenge. And again, that world championship is in April. And this year we had four teams uh, who we had four slots at the world championship. So four teams advanced. So national registration is just registering your team. Again, you have to have two coaches uh ready to go for that to coaches or mentors um, to sign up for that robot equipment. Uh, you need a starter robot kit. Rev is one of two choices. So the price for that is there. Uh, and then there's a control and power bundle that comes with all the driver and control hubs. Now this stuff is reusable from year to year, although most teams will replace some of the materials in order to build a new robot, but that control and power bundle especially can be used from year to year. Uh, and you don't need to buy a full new kit every year. It's optional to buy uh, the perimeter and we'll show a video in a little bit, but you'll see the wall perimeter and the foam tiles that lay down on the floor. That's kind of an optional thing. Again, that can be used from year to year. So if your team's able to do some fundraising or get a grant um, to get that, it's a great way to practice, but you can just practice on, you know, cheap foam tiles and, and uh, part of a set as well. Uh, the yearly game set, you can choose either a full game set or a partial game set. The partial game set, the price actually this year was 350, but it changes a little bit from year to year. And, uh, it's kind of like a half field of materials. So uh, it's a way to save a little bit of money if, if you're on a tight, tight budget. And then, like I mentioned, we have two different ways that teams can choose to compete. They can choose to do the league play, which is three official meets plus one qualifier, or they can sign up for um, a qualifier and they can sign up for up to two qualifiers. So again, uh, FIRST does require that you have two adult coaches um, or mentors. Now, a lot of people get intimidated when we get to the level FIRST Tech Challenge because the programming is a little more complicated, the hardware is a little more complicated, uh, but I will share in our breakout sessions some good resources for people. It's helpful to have at least one coach or mentor or a helper who comes occasionally who has some technology background but it's not critical because really at this age, especially as the kids hit that high school age, 
they if you put resources in front of them, they become very good at researching things on their own and connecting into the community that's out there. And it is a very big, helpful community with FTC. So there's a lot of opportunity to ask questions and get problems solved and things. Teams that uh, are competing typically are meeting two to three times per week for anywhere from three to four hours. Some teams only meet for two hours um, after school kind of thing. Uh, others will add in like a Saturday where they can have a little longer work session. Really is up to the team and what works for the participants. You can have a bigger team with First Tech Challenge, so up to 15 students, but I would say our average team is still between seven and 10 students. Uh, if you get above 15, we've allowed teams to be bigger than that, but it really gets difficult to manage. And in my experience, the students don't have as good of an experience because it's just a lot harder to keep all of them focused and have something that they feel really is contributing to the team. Uh, students, again, are going to really need to work collaboratively. Uh, they develop a game strategy. They're going to build and program that robot. And then also the community outreach, both they can help volunteer with high tech kids in various ways, or they can um, run their own STEM activities within their school or their community, or they can invite uh, community people into their team to give talks about different topics, uh, to share about technology and how it's being used in careers and things like that. And parents are really important um, at this level because they can help with community connections that might lead to uh, fundraising opportunities or services and goods that the team can help um, use. Uh, and they also help take some of the load off the main coaches as far as just being the administrator and the helper and things. So including parents in some way um, is, is really helpful for the longevity of the team. And a lot of times those parents will go on to be a coach as a different kids age out. All right, so High Tech Kids, again, we are here for you. Um, one of the things that I highly recommend for any new team is to attend that free uh, kickoff event that, I, again, is the Saturday after Labor Day. We also, I strongly recommend that any rookie or even second year coaches sign up for our um, hands-on coach training. We have two parts to that. The first part is kind of an overview of the season and the structure and a lot of resources and things. And the afternoon part of that session is actually hands on with a robot, um, showing you how to drive the robot, do some basic programming, just to increase comfort level and answer any questions. And we don't have the exact date set for that, but we're looking at um, probably the Saturday after the kickoff. So it would be mid-September and still give you plenty of time to get started with your team. We also run a monthly call specifically for the event coming events coming up that month. And it's a chance for coaches to run through any questions or issues that have come up for us to pass on specific information about those tournament venues and things like that. And then I strongly recommend that if you become a coach for FTC, that you join the Minnesota FTC coach Slack channel amazing group of people who can answer any of your technical questions that come up. Uh, very experienced group. And there are people on there that will answer you in less than an hour. <laughs> so it's a great, um, a great, great resource for you to use. It is just for coaches. It's not for students um, to utilize, uh, but it is a great way to, uh, if you run into technical challenges or you're having um, uh, equipment shortages or something comes up right before a tournament and you need to borrow something, uh, you can go on there and people will jump to your help. It's a wonderful community. Let's take a little bit of look at what FTC looks like.
Great. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Heather Starks. Uh, my job here is uh, one of the jobs I have is the grant uh, writing and development for high tech kids. So I'm just going to talk to you about some team grant opportunities that we have. Um, so the first one is national grant. So the national um, uh, first website will have some uh, options for you. So for first rookie teams, their FTC teams, they have grants for that. They also have some options both for FTC and FLL for uh, new and returning teams through some corporate grants. There aren't really deadlines or um, specific timelines. So just checking back on that website uh, often is a good idea. Um, the next one is that High Tech Kids, uh, we have some corporate partnership grants uh, that we can offer. Sometimes they're uh, connected to regions of the state. Um, sometimes they're connected to uh, teams from uh, low income communities. So reaching out to us and finding out what options we have available to you. We always put those applications on our website. Um, they'll be there from uh, about now-ish to mid-August. We're still working on some of the wording for some of them, but take a look at our website to find out more. Um, they, the team must be based in Minnesota and compete at a Minnesota event in order to qualify for those. One thing I just want to mention too is something that we highly value here at High Tech Kids is to make sure that these um, programs are affordable. Um, our fees right now cover about seven or 30% of the cost. We fundraise the remaining 70%, but we want to make sure that that 30% is not a barrier to any team across the state. So um, uh, taking a look at these national and high tech kids grants is something that we really um, strongly suggest we want to work hard on. There's also regional and community grants. So we do know that um, there are some uh, companies and organizations out there that would love to support teams, but they're willing to do it uh, regionally only. So um, if you're, uh, if you've got uh, parents with your students that are part of the um, the team that maybe work for a company, they're willing to donate money to a, a specific team instead of to an organization like High Tech Kids. So I um, am more than happy to help any team navigate that if you have any questions. And then we just uh, received a grant from the Department of Economic and Employment uh, Development this last February. Um, and the application will be available in June. It is for uh, new FTC teams that have uh, some high schoolers on them. They don't all have to be high schoolers, but they need to be high school uh, connected and compete at a Minnesota event. Um, so if you, that uh, is part of, uh, if that describes one of the teams that you're working with or looking to launch, um, please reach out and we'll make sure that you um, get to be a part of that as well. So we've got lots of opportunities. Just reach out and we will do our best to, to support you. All right, well, thanks, Heather. So one thing that um, we have talked about over and over again is we want you to know that um, if you choose to coach, if you're going to start organizing teams in your school or with your, you know, scout group or, or whatever, um, we are here to help. Um, that's why we're here. Uh, so email us, um, give us a call in the office. Um, we, we don't want you to struggle and struggle and struggle and then get to an event and say, Oh, we just couldn't figure it out because um, because someone in this office can either help you or find someone who can help you, um, and that's that's what we do. So we want to make sure that you guys are are coming out and um, and really really contact us if you need some help. Um, we're, we're happy to answer emails or talk to you on the phone or or however it is you want to communicate. So um, we're very very willing to do that. So now. We're going to go on to the um, uh, the breakout room session, but I did want to uh, say that someone had asked in the chat, they they have a child, they want to know how to find a team in their area. One thing um, that I realized uh, that we neglected to put on this um, slideshow was um, if you're looking for teams in your area, I would start with looking, start with your school. See if your school has a team. If your school doesn't have a team, there are many community ed programs, um, especially in the Twin Cities area, who run First Lego League and First Tech Challenge out of community ed. Um, if you can't find anything, please feel free to um, email me. Um, and I'm Vicki, Vicki at High Tech Kids. Um, I can look up and see where teams have been perhaps close to you. Um, because we also work with other organizations. So there are some, there are other organizations and robotics groups that that run maybe in tandem with community ed or instead of community ed that we know of 
that that we can kind of hook you up with if you live in those areas. So uh, please reach out if you can't find something um, already in your own backyard. So right now, um, we should be able to, um, Heather, if you can launch the breakout rooms, um, so you can self-select to the breakout room that you would like to go to. I'm going to stay here in case there's anyone who doesn't particularly want to go to a breakout room but might have a question. Um, and then Jeannie will be in the breakout room for First Lego League Challenge and Explore. And then Chris will be in the breakout room for First Tech Challenge. <laughs> 